I've been into this idea of making spheres out of a 20-sided object. So you can lay the 20 triangles that make up the 20 sides of the object out flat, make whatever the pattern's going to be on those triangles, and roll those triangles into the 20-sided object. So the idea I wanted to work with this time was to make a globe where the land and the ocean are made out of scrap pieces of wood. And I can lay those pieces of wood out onto the flat triangles. The first thing to do was to draw the map of the world onto a background piece of scrap plywood. My first thought about doing this was to draw those lines with my drag knife and not cut very deep into the plywood, but just enough to leave a mark. I just need to be able to see where the triangles are and where the map of the earth is. After doing this, it worked okay on the triangles, but it was having a hard time with the map. So I decided what I really needed to do was to stop and make a pen holder for the CNC machine. I looked at what had been done and there were sort of a bunch of interesting options. What I thought I would try and do is make a tube that would just hold the pen. What's a little bit tricky with the CNC, especially when trying to draw on plywood, is you need a little bit of shock absorption with the pen. It can't just be held rigid because you'll either destroy the tip on the pen or it won't quite touch the material it's supposed to be drawing on. So my idea was to sort of have a gravity spring, basically just use the weight of the pen to push it down onto the material. As these fine felt tip pens don't need very much pressure to draw. This seemed to work. So it's just a tube and it's a half an inch on the outside so it fits my half inch collet. And I drilled it out on the inside just a little bit to hold the pen. Once I had the map drawn, I started working on making the actual physical parts of the triangle. The idea I had was to build the land and the oceans as a mosaic of scrap wood, then pour resin in around those pieces just to kind of fill in everything and make it a solid, continuous surface. So the first thing to do is to build the outline of the map. And this would hold the resin in place and keep it from flowing all over the place. It's sort of the mold for the outside of the map. I put a quick new fence on the radial arm saw I used for cutting angles. Once this was set up and the stops were set up, I could make some pieces to make the triangles that will infill around the map. You'll see this here in a minute. So I've made the outline, which is on the plywood with the map, and I can make a series of triangles that will basically just keep the resin out of those areas and kind of show me what triangles actually need ocean and land. And in doing this, as I was going to put this back onto the CNC machine to cut out the triangles, I didn't want to use any metal fasteners, meaning no pin nails. <laughs> So I had to do everything with clamps and weight to hold the glue in place. This seemed to work. I did the lower edge first and let that set up. And once that was sort of in place, I could use that as a base to attach the other things to. I could start adding the triangles along that edge and start working on the rest of the outline of the map. These don't need to be super precise. They just need to be bigger than what I'm going to cut as I will cut off any extra when I cut out the triangles. So with the clamps and some weights, gluing up the parts worked pretty well. So now everything has set up. I can take all the clamps off and I can start working on the map. So I had found the box of scraps from working on the art projects at my kid's school a few years back. Finding this box was one of the things that gave me the idea for this project. And I started to think about how to lay out these scrap pieces 
sort of doing a collage of a map of the Earth. And as I was doing that, I started to cut and trim some of the bigger pieces so they'd fit into the height of the map I was making. And as I did this more and more, I began to think that using the scrap pieces that I had from the box wasn't really the way that I wanted to go. What I really needed was a series of scrap pieces that were the right height. <laughs> So I ended up finding a different kind of scrap wood in the shop. I have all of these sticks left over from projects and I could cut those to widths that would work for the land in the map. And I started to cut those strips to the lengths, the length that would be the height of the map that I was gonna make. I started this on the table saw and this seemed like it was just gonna take forever because I needed so many pieces. I then set up a stop on the bandsaw and I could cut a series of the strips all at once and this was much, much quicker. This gave me a bucket full of scrap pieces that would all be the right length and would go into the map nicely. I wanted the land to be a little more solid where all the pieces for the most part fit together. Then the ocean would be a lighter wood but the pieces would be separated and I could pour the resin in around the pieces in the ocean. Or at least that's the thought I had. And this is why the, the big box of scrap pieces seemed too complicated to try and figure that out as a puzzle. So I built the land first, and it was just a matter of gluing pieces together and down to the base plywood, and kind of following the map that I had drawn with the CNC machine. So I'm leaving it a little loose and just kind of letting it be what it wants to be. I ran out of pieces. I thought I had cut plenty, but this was taking a lot of scrap pieces to make. <laughs> I had a little glue pond that I could dip my brush into and brush a little bit of glue on each piece. So it went fairly quickly and it, it did take some time to do this, but it wasn't, it wasn't like it was a week. It was more like a day. <laughs> and I was trying to be random with the parts. I didn't want to try and make any kind of commentary on different parts of the map. <laughs> Antarctica goes in the bottom triangles and is cut into five pieces. Then I found some maple pieces for the ocean. I've really been wanting to use pieces out of this pile as it's full and I don't have room for new pieces. So it's nice to have a project where I don't really need anything specific, it just kind of needs to be the right kind of wood. I can cut those into varying strips. For the ocean pieces, I had the height as part of the strip and I wanted random lengths for the pieces that would make up the ocean. So the land is end grain on the sphere and the maple of the oceans is side grain. So I didn't have a stop set up for any particular length. It was just kind of cutting random lengths as I would need sort of bigger pieces for out in the middle of the oceans and smaller, finer pieces to go around the shorelines. I set up the equator first and I could just glue those pieces down and again just kind of eyeballing the spacing. And then I can start filling in the oceans. I was hoping this would go a little faster than the land as I already had the space I needed to fill and there was space between the pieces but this still took a while. It took longer than I thought it was going to take. I had also separated all of the triangles to make up for the width of the router bit on the CNC. So I was also filling in scrap pieces of wood that would be cut out. So this is actually slightly bigger than the pieces will be in the end. I had this marked on the CNC table so I could put it back in the same place 
but I wanted to cut off some of the plywood. So I remarked and reset up some registration points so I could put it back in the same place after I had cut off some of the size of this. I wanted this to fit in the oven so I could dry it out and warm it up before pouring the resin. So after letting it sit at 150 degrees for a morning, I was ready to do the resin part. This is in a corner of our basement. And with this resin, you do half of part A and half part B by weight. And you mix it for a minute really well. And this time, instead of using the pressure pot, as my piece wasn't gonna fit in the pressure pot, <laughs> I tried degassing the resin by putting it in a vacuum chamber. I'd found with some previous work that it actually gave a, a really nice clear resin doing it this way. So I got the gas and the bubbles out and once it comes out of the vacuum chamber, I just poured it in around the mosaic. I thought about doing blue for the oceans, just because that seemed obvious. <laughs> but I was afraid that whatever blue I got would kind of be random. And I didn't want to just have some random blue color without it working with the wood colors. And also it turned out this took a lot more resin than I had thought. I ended up, I think, doing four of these cups. So I would have had four different blue versions if I had done it that way. So I just did clear for now. I was kind of thinking also, if it had been a color, it certainly doesn't have to be blue. It could have been yellow or orange or something. And that might have actually maybe been a little bit nicer than just the clear in the end. And this used up all the resin that I had. <laughs> I was afraid I wasn't gonna have enough. It was just enough. Also, the whole piece warped a little bit, which maybe I should have known, <laughs> but it wasn't a big deal. I just had to shim the corners up just a little bit under the hold downs. And I just had to know that it had a little bit of warp to it as I set the heights for the router bed. It worked and it cut just fine. It did mean I couldn't really cut it all the way through on the CNC machine. So I left the plywood backing intact. Also, I didn't really want to run the, all this plastic resin through the dust collector as that sawdust goes to the city compost. So I vacuumed up all this plastic separately. I can separate all the pieces with the bandsaw. This so was pretty straightforward, just lots of cuts. <laughs> the fear is running the blade into a triangle. I managed not to do that. So the plywood side is gonna be the outside of the sphere when the sphere is put together. I had thought it would be neat to sort of have this 20-sided plywood object that I then would turn and sort of reveal the globe within. But in thinking about it, I was going to be losing a lot of material around the seams in the angle between the triangles if I had that extra quarter inch of plywood on the triangles. So I decided I needed to remove that plywood. I tried doing it with a bandsaw and I tried doing it with a chisel and decided the bandsaw was slightly easier. This one with the chisel that I filmed was actually the easiest one with the chisel that I tried. <laughs> and once I had most of the plywood off, I could sand the rest of it down to the resin and the pieces of scrap wood. Once the triangles were ready, I could cut the angles onto the sides of the triangles. So with this 20-sided object, all the angles are the same and I could just cut the same angle with one jig on all three sides of the triangles. So that makes it much more straightforward than the more complicated globe project that I did last summer. This is the same process as the Christmas ornament that I did last December. 
except instead of a Christmas tree, I'm now doing a sort of map mosaic. I had made the mosaic backwards as it was the inside of the globe looking out. So I had to flip everything around before gluing the parts together. I was nervous that I wasn't going to get the order right. My first attempt at gluing everything up was going okay, but I found that the tape wasn't sticking as well as I'd hoped, and my little pin clamps that had worked in the soft wood version of this weren't really working very well on the hardwood and the resin. And I sort of panicked and took everything apart and wiped all the glue off and let everything dry and calmed down and came back a little later with my flat piece of countertop and tried a second attempt at gluing. And having the flat work surface helps. Also having more of a plan. I did the ring around the center of the globe first, then did the cap on the north and south poles second. And having the flat surface to be able to push all those parts together and flat helped. Also cleaning. <laughs> cleaning that work surface so the tape didn't have dust on it and understanding a little better how the pin clamps work. If I pin them into the actual pieces of wood, that works a lot better than just trying to throw them on there because if they hit the resin, they don't tend to stick very well. My fear that night as it dried was I'd screwed up a triangle or screwed up all the triangles and it just wasn't even close to a globe. <laughs> But when I took the tape off and looked at everything, it looked like it made sense. Then I can quickly sand the corners off. This will mean a little less turning. I put it on the lathe, and it didn't seem like it was working with the cups. I actually, and I do this every once in a while, I go back to a previous project and the footage I've shot and look at how I did this same thing the last time. <laughs> And it looked like I had used a drive center instead of the cup for the first pass on the sphere. So that's what I did. And that, that worked much better. The cup just wasn't grabbing the corners of the shape very well. It would just stop if I put the tool into the workpiece. So the, the first pass, I can get, sort of get it as close to a sphere as I can. and get enough surface around the points that the cup will work. And it actually turned quite nicely. I, I'm sort of always a little bit afraid of resin as it's, it's a little bit finicky and it's fairly hard, so it, it's sort of slow going through. And I didn't have the problem I had on the ornament where it didn't feel centered. I was able to take down all the flat spots pretty quickly. So I find a nice shearing cut around the two sides and a super sharp tool make this work pretty well. And I can get it to where I can start at a somewhat high sandpaper. I don't have to try and reshape the piece while sanding. It's, it's pretty much done once the turning is done. Also, I find on these spheres, it'll, it'll sort of be chattery for a while. And then there's a point at which it finally kind of seats itself in the cup. And it feels like it's a sphere at that point and it turns much smoother and everything just feels really smooth at that point. So this took probably half a day, I think. I think I started after lunch, got it done in the afternoon, got it to where I could start sanding. And then the next morning, I spent about two hours sanding. Now it's nice and smooth and it's about done. Still need to sand. <laughs> so I sanded, I think I started at 80 grit. I really could have started at 100. And I went all the way up to 12,000. So I think with this, I'm gonna polish it up to 12,000 and then not put any finish on it. And then in the future, if I ever wanna kind of fill in some of the air bubbles or kind of put another coat of resin on it, I can do that. So I knew it was gonna be kind of rough. That's how I was making it. But I was sort of telling myself that the seams between the triangles weren't going to be a big deal because it's all little pieces anyways. 
But I think in future, when thinking about this, I can't just ignore the seams between the triangles. I think that has to be, if not part of the design, it at least thought through a little bit. I like kind of the rough collage part of this, but the angles made by the triangles kind of break up that pattern. It's not terrible. I think it's just something to think about. Thanks for watching.